So this morning I want to talk to you a little bit about a subject that I've, uh, God has been working on me for several months now, and he's not finished by any means, and it's about walking in, in, in the law of love or love of law. The two different, different laws, he's going to put that up in a minute, and how that works itself out in my life. If I'm for the law or for love, and we would all say, well, I, I'm for the love because that's a new covenant, but let's just look at it a little bit closer this morning. We as human beings, we are very familiar with the law. We like the law because we can get free through the law. If you drive 100 kilometers an hour to Winnipeg and you have your driver license and you have your car insurance, you are good. If the police comes, you're totally relaxed. You're good. If there's a siren coming behind you and lights blinking, and you're good. He's going to pass you. You're, you're fine. It's, it's not you. You're good. But if you drive 150 kilometers an hour, now you quickly pass on the brakes when he comes. Because you know, you know, you, he could nail you for it. You know it. So we know exactly what to do on this earth with the laws that we're familiar with. Uh, and if we're not familiar with the laws, then we guess, right? Last week, or two weeks ago, crossing the, to, into Mexico from Belize, we had our, all our, had our passports. We had to stamp our passports out of Belize. We had to pay some, whatever it was, 30 bucks or something. And then we went to another building, another building, and we stamped our passport to Mexico, and we got a little piece of paper, and they had their laws. Once we had it all together, it, then we could, could leave. We were good. We were never afraid if they would stop us, if they would nail us for something, because we were good. We followed the law. And so that, that's how we are comfortable living uh, in the law. And law, laws keep us safe. You drive on the right side of the road because it's safe. We all agree to drive on the right side of the road. Left side of the road, ticket, accidents. Right side, you're okay. So we have these laws that we work with every single day. And in our, in our house, uh, we had a, this rule, or when our kids were smaller, that the boys cleared the table and the, and the ladies put it into the dishwasher. That was our law. Or we can say our rule. And so the boys knew if they had cleared the table, they were free. They were good to go. They could go play, no problem. Clear conscience. But if they hadn't cleared the table, then they were not free. So we have these laws in our mind that we, that we work with all the time. There's no one running around here and screaming. Why not? Because you're all sitting down. You all feel good about sitting down. If anyone was running around screaming, you would, he would feel odd. And we would all say, sit down, sit down. We're all sitting. He'd be out of place because we have this unspoken rule that we all sit down for the message. If I hadn't worn a shirt this morning, you would say, oh, my goodness. Step down, sit down. It's not right. It's not, it's not good. But now I have a shirt. You never thought of it. I'm good. I'm well accepted. I have a shirt. But that's how we think through our life. And so we are, we are governed that way. I told somebody here this morning, uh, the, the, the Catholic way of, of uh, repenting of their sins and paying for their sins makes sense in my mind. It, it's kind of a nice way to get free, right, if you really believe it. When, when I was young, uh, and my mom would, would, would tell me this happened way too often, <laughs> she would say, when dad comes home, you're going to get a spanking. So I had to wait for a couple of hours, and it was, it was a terrible couple of hours. But once I got a spank, I was free. I was free, back to clean sheet, right? Because I know now the punishment had been paid. So we, 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 we function well in this whole law thing. Because when there's a law, there's a judgment and there's a punishment. When that's all paid for, we're good. We're good. And if we don't obey the law, then we're restless. We're not sure where to go and what to do. And because we are relational, we, we want to fit in. We want to fit in. We, we all want to be accepted. We have a desperate need to be accepted and loved, and we, we all do. 
and we know exactly how to please people. We know what to do to please people. I wear a shirt. It's better. I can please, please you better that way, right? So we have this unspoken rule of doing things. And uh, it's hard for us not to live by law because that's how we are governed. Young kids grow up by rules. But at what time does it change over to God's rule where these rules no longer govern us? At what point does that change over? And so the question I want to ask you this morning is, how do we get free spiritually? We know naturally with the rules, if we follow all the rules, we feel good. We feel really good. We've done well. But how do you know if you've done well spiritually? How do you know if God is happy with you? If I asked you each this morning, is, is God happy with you right now, what would you say? You might say, yes. You might say, don't know. You might say, I don't think so. I don't know. So, but on, on a natural, we know exactly what to do in order to be okay. Romans uh, tells us that as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Okay, so there's a spirit now. And if you read the New Testament, you will read that Jesus did away with the laws, and he gave us a new law to go by. He says, I will give you the Holy Spirit, and he will guide you to all truth. Okay, but how does that work? How does that work? How do we ever become free? And John 10 says, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. Oh, okay, now there's somebody talking to me. How's that going to work? And it's, it's, it's a bit confusing because laws we understand. Do this, and this is the result. But how about spiritually? How do we get free? And, and I think we have just as big of a desire to be accepted by God as by people. I've had several experiences in the last couple of weeks where, where people got free. And, and one guy was said, I'm walking on air. He was now free. He was rid of the guilt that he carried. He was free, and he was so happy. He said, I'm floating. No longer guilty. No longer guilty. When Jesus lived on earth, there was still animal sacrifice happening. He was the new covenant, right? He was the new covenant. And so it was very common. Everyone in that era, in that day, knew about laws and about sacrifices, about paying for sin. They all knew this law. And there were hundreds of laws. So when Jesus used the word, a commandment, they all knew what he was talking about. And in uh, John 13, verse 34, he says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. So he's, among all these hundreds of commandments, he says, I'm going to give you a new one. A new one. And he says, love one another as I have loved you. He died for us. So he really, really loved us. He says, so love one another. So this is a big deal. Very, very big deal. And we're often attempting to get right with God by obeying laws. I've, I, I've had the privilege of leading at least three people to the Lord in the last two weeks. And... And uh, I would ask them the question, are you, are you a believer in Jesus Christ? And then they would say, well, I go to church. They would say, I, I try to do what is right. They would all say that. So we are law-oriented. If I went to church every Sunday, if I didn't lie, then I guess I'm a Christian. And we explained that Christianity was not about following a law. It was about accepting the atonement that was made for us. And so when they understood that, they, they were happy to, to accept it. And it says, if we abide in the word, Romans says, if we abide in the word, then the, we will know the truth, and the truth will lead us into all true and living, and, and, says, and you will be free. It will lead you into truth, and you will be free if you abide in the truth. And so how can we get free from being the judge and jury in life? We like to judge everything. Next Sunday, I'll talk a little more on the love side, but this morning, I'll talk a little more on the law side. We like to judge everyone. We, you can look at anybody in this audience, and you have, a, you have a thought like that. And we like to judge people. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. If you only did this, 
Like we have a whole list. So we like to play judge and jury here on earth. When God says that I will judge, you love and I will judge. You love and I will judge. That's a concept that we have a difficult under, difficulty understanding because there has to be a punishment. And, and I have to remind the people of the punishment. It's hard for me just to love. It, it, it's, just, it's just simple. And God says he will be the judge. He also says you will be judged according to the way you judge. This person that was forgiven 10,000 talents, he now goes, demands 100 denarii from his person, person that, 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 that was owing him. And then he says, you will therefore owe the whole amount and you'll be given over to the tormentors. So how we forgive, how we look at other people, how we judge affects us personally. It says, forgive or trespass, or, 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 or trespass as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. So that it makes a difference how we view people. So my question this morning is, do we know what it means to live in the law of love? We know the love of law. We know that. That we understand clearly. 1 Peter 1.22 says, Since you have purified your souls in obeying the tr truth through the spirit of sincere love of the brethren. Through the spirit of sincere love of the brethren. Love one another fervently with a pure heart. Pure heart. We sang this morning that God had a pure love for us. And so, how do we, how do we walk in this love? What, what is this love about that I'm talking about? Or how do I know that I'm spiritually accepted? How do I know that I'm free spiritually? That I don't owe a debt? Because that's how we think. And so, I'd like to explain a little bit what I mean with, with walking in love or loving the law of love. The minute you look at someone or something, you have a thought. Uh, but before you form a thought about what you see, there's this intuition or this sense. That's where your thoughts come from. And then you put it into words. I'm talking about the first part here. Where if you see something, if you see a new building being built, Something goes through your head. Oh, that's too big. Or, oh, that's nice. Oh, I wonder if I can pay for it. Like, there's thoughts that go through your head instantly. And that first part that I, uh, is what I want to talk about. If we live in the law of love, then that first part is positive. If you meet someone in the lobby uh, and this is a problem, the person you've had a problem with, what goes through your head immediately? Oh, I'm going to avoid that person. Before you even form a thought about it, you've already made a, 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 a subconscious judgment call. And so that intuition governs how we think and speak. Uh, the, the word intuition means the ability to understand something immediately without the need for conscious reasoning. So before you reason, before you think about it, it's already there. And that's how we know if we are walking in love or in law. If you can differentiate what that little piece is in your mind. You've had a dozen of them from the time you got off the car till you came inside, till you sat down. You've had a dozen or more of those. As you saw people, things. And, and I find that's where I can check myself where I really am. Sometimes I find myself in the law. Sometimes I find myself in love. And God has been speaking to me about this for the last several months. And I understand it's a little piece of it at this point. Because some uh, things that he teaches me are always things that I didn't know, it seems. Just long enough to say, really? And then it's gone. And I say, God, what was that really? Is that really how it works? And, and it just blows my mind. And then we sing about the love of God. And I say, but we, we, we can't grasp, we can't put it together. We can't seem, somehow seem to put it together. This, this intuition is a very subtle thing. Very subtle thing. But we all have it. If you think about it, we all have it. And if that is positive or if that is love, then we think good thoughts and then we speak good words. If we try to work on the words and the natural root is still bad, the leaves are bad. 
if the fruit hasn't changed, it, it, the, the leaves will continue being, being bad. And so it's a very subtle, subtle thing, but actions come from this subtle thought. And it's, it's, a, it's a piece that we want, don't want to really acknowledge. It's so subtle. We don't really want to acknowledge it. Because we say, well, that was just a fleeting thought or just a split-second impression. No, that, that, that actually tells, tells you who you are. If I walk in the, law, the, the love of law, then I am very quick to judge everything. Everybody, every, everything I see, I judge real quickly. And when I judge someone, then I, can, I, I consider myself free. Because I'm the judge and jury. I can tell you what's wrong with you. So if you see a, a drunk beside the road, what is your first thought that comes to your mind? Before it's actually a thought, first intuition. Ah, he shouldn't drink. Oh, we shouldn't give him money. He's a drunkard. Or do you say, I wonder what kind of pain caused him to drink like that? What is, what is really going on in this person's mind? And with a thought of love comes a responsibility. How can I help this person? The minute you judge, you're free of responsibilities in your mind. But if you look at a person and say, I wonder what's going on, on, on in his life. He must have been really disappointed in something in his life. Then the love comes out. And I think we are generally driven by love or law. If I put a picture up here of a little kitten, somebody holding a little kitten, you'd all say, ah. But if I had a picture of a Somebody pulling a girl's hair, you'd say, oh, not really. That's not good. So that, that would this, it would, this split second you saw the picture, something would happen. So something is happening in your mind. We ignore that part because we say, well, that we, we can't help it. You actually can. You actually can. And I find the more we fall in love with God, the more this first piece changes. The initial part changes. And as that piece changes, you view everything differently. You can go along Main Street and Arbor and you can, you can make comments about everything all the time. They should do a face on that building. That's an old building. You can, you can judge everything all the time. Every tree should be trimmed. Like It's a way of thinking. But when we think out of love, then we say, Hmm. We look at the good. We look at the good. Um, I'm closing. I'm going to give you a quick verse that I had uh, looked up. Uh, we, are, we are very familiar with this verse, but it's uh, Philippians 4.8. It says, Dearly beloved, it says, one final thing. And he's been talking about a number of things. But he said, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, Right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and worthy of praise. Why does that verse say that? Why do we even have a verse like that? Because by nature we are judgmental and we are law-driven. He's trying to tell us, think out of love. As I have loved you, so you love one another. So we can, we can live off the law of love. Everything changes in our life. You can't gossip if you love. You can't. Immediately, something in your mind, God talks to you in your mind immediately. You can't gossip. Gossip is law. Gossip is the same as law because we judge. And we find it very hard as human beings to to not judge because somebody has to tell them. And that doesn't mean that if you walk in love that you don't correct wrong. It doesn't mean that. The truth in love works. The truth in law hurts. The letter always kills and love always builds up. Always, always, always. So how do you think? I'm not so much talking about what you do, but how do you think? 
How do you view everyone? If we can think out of love, our actions will get there sooner or later. And I can force myself to smile, but walk in law. I can already have judged you, but yeah, we're supposed to smile. So it's treat one another nice. So I smile and I, I talk to you nice, but inwardly I'm 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 law. And this little piece that comes before the thought, you can feel. You can be with a person, you can look at a person, and you can sense some of that. People will make statements like, this person would never say that. He would hurt a fly. Why do people say that of someone? Because of how they act and think. I know a person of, of, of whom it is said, this person would never gossip. This person just never gossips. Interesting. He has a name that he doesn't gossip. That means he has a thought of love towards people. Next time I want to continue on this topic, but I, I really hope I can do it a little bit of justice at least on explaining what I, I feel God is telling me about, about this subject about love and law because it makes all the difference in life. It makes a difference. If I, could, if I am a law person, I, I, I'm never free. I don't have a, a feeling I'm free. I have a hard time loving my Heavenly Father. But if I can walk in love with God, I can love, walk in love with people. And in love, we become free. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you say in your word that you love us so much. And you tell us in your word that we're to love one another as you have loved us. We are supposed to meditate on good things. When we look at a person, you're spo we are supposed to meditate on what is lovely, what is pure, of good report, excellent. Lord, by nature, we do the exactly the opposite. Lord, teach us what you mean when you tell us to walk by this new commandment, loving one another fervently and with a pure heart. Teach us what it means to be the lover of people and not the judge of people. Lord, there's nothing more powerful than love. Lord, we need to be taught so much by you in this. So we don't destroy people. Lord, teach us to love. In Jesus' name, amen.